Welcome to Pentecost. It is the third great festival in the year of the church and we're glad to have you with us on this Pentecost Sunday. It is normally a, a, a Sunday that is filled with the notions of the Holy Spirit and, and with fire and, and breath and wind and all of those things. And so we look forward to this celebration to understand better about how that part of the Trinity works in our lives. So welcome to Pentecost Sunday. Let's prepare our hearts for worship. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah! Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah! Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are raised with him to new life. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, from the beginning you created us in your image and planted us in a well-watered garden. In the desert, you promised pools of water for the parched, and you gave us water from the rock when we did not know the way. You sent the Good Shepherd to lead us to still waters. At the cross, you watered us from Jesus' wounded side, and on this day, you shower us again with the water of life. We praise you for your salvation through water and for the water of the font and for all water everywhere. Bathe us in your forgiveness, grace, and love. Satisfy the thirsty and give us the life that only you can give. To you be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Gracious Spirit, heed our pleading, fashion us all anew. It's your leading that we're needing, help us to follow you. Come, come, come Holy Spirit. Let us pray. O oh God, on this day you open the hearts of your faithful people by sending into us your Holy Spirit. Direct us by the light of that Spirit that we may have a right judgment in all things and rejoice at all times in your peace through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Numbers, the 11th chapter. Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord, and he gathered 70 elders of the people and placed them all around the tent. Then the Lord came down in a cloud and spoke to him and took some of the spirit that was on him and put it into the 70 elders. And when the spirit rested upon them, they prophesied but they did not do so again. Two men remained in the camp, 
one named Eldad and the other named Medad, and the spirit rested on them. They were among those registered, but they had not gone out to the tent, and so they prophesied in the camp. And the young man ran and told Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. And Joshua, son of Nun, the assistant of Moses, one of his chosen men, said, My Lord Moses, stop them. But Moses said to them, Are you jealous for my sake? Would that all of God's people were prophets, and that the Lord would put his spirit on them? And Moses and the elders of Israel returned to the camp. Here ends the reading. A reading from the Gospel of John. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced, and they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. The Gospel of the Lord. Hear this reading from the book of Acts, chapter 2. When the day of Pentecost had come, the disciples were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents from Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They're filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it's only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my Spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my Spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hey kids, I'm glad you're able to watch this video and this is a children's message just for you. So um, come gather with me around, uh, around your screen, whether that's a computer screen, a monitor, or a TV screen, and uh, come sit around and I want us to pretend like we're doing something special. Um, it's getting warm outside now, and so uh, sometimes people like to, once it's um, warm enough, they go camping, and uh, maybe they do a campfire, so 
let's just imagine there's a campfire here and we're kind of gathered around a campfire. So you can put your hands out and feel the warmth and you can kind of make sure you've got your, uh, your hot dog or your marshmallow ready to cook over the campfire. Um, but don't get too close. Just like that marshmallow that you get maybe too close to the flame and it catches on fire. Some people like that. I don't like that very much. But that same thing can happen to you. You got to be careful with the fire, right? Yeah. It's good. The fire is good. But um, the fire is also a little bit dangerous if you don't treat it with respect. That's kind of how we... Um, kind of how we understand all sorts of things in our life. Um, we have to be careful with fire. We have to make sure that um, we tend to it properly. We have to make sure that we treat it with respect and don't get right into it, that we don't fall into it accidentally or anything like that. And that's also true of um, a lot of different things, but say like um, interactions with other people. Interactions with other people are good. Having social contact is good. Talking to people, playing with other kids, uh, doing that kind of stuff, worshiping with each other is good. But we have to be very careful when we do them. So I want to remind you that um, we have to be careful, uh, not only during this time and the pandemic, and be careful that we don't um, get too close and uh, catch a disease from someone else, but uh, also careful with what we say. Sometimes our tongues can be like fire. And we sometimes mention, uh, fire, like having a tongue, a tongue of fire. Uh, our reading in Acts had that tongues of fire appeared above them. Um, our tongues can indeed be fire sometimes, where uh, they can be used for good, like a campfire that provides warmth and we cook our food over, but also sometimes we can do pretty awful things with our tongues. We can say mean things. Um, we can be cruel to each other. So we have to treat those things with respect treat our interactions with others in re with respect, treat our words uh, carefully so that they're used for good and not for harm. So enjoy the fires that are in your life. Um, hopefully soon you'll be able to do a campfire and if you are, enjoy it. But just like your speech and your interaction with others, be careful with it and make sure it's used for good and not bad. Thanks guys, you can go back to your seats. So hopefully you've been able to read the weekly devotions, the daily devotions we've been sending out. Um, and this past week was my turn. Uh, Pastor Tim and I have been alternating. And I had the last uh, seven days, including this morning. And I, in that whole preparation and lead up to Pentecost, I called it the week of fire. And all of the daily devotions were themed around that concept of fire, preparing for the fire of the coming of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost. So when we think of fire, we have all kinds of different fires, and they accomplish all kinds of different purposes. We have fires of renewal. We have fires of purification. We have fires of destruction. We have baptism by fire that John the Baptist mentions at one point. We have fires for warmth and survival, and cooking. We have fires of forges for creation. We have prophetic fire. And when we think about all those fires, those are um, good ways to think about the Holy Spirit's work in our lives and in the lives of our church and in the lives of our communities. But especially I want us to think through uh, some of the facets of prophetic fire. What is a prophetic message? Prophecy is not necessarily future-telling. Rather, it's truth-telling. If the prophecy does predict uh, future reality, it does so because it sees the present clearly enough to decipher what is happening now and where things are leading if there isn't a change. That's why those Old Testament prophets that you read are always pleading with the people for change, pleading with the leaders to change their hearts and change their actions. They're saying, if things go on like they have been, we're headed for a world of trouble. And so often, they were right. The sad part of prophecy is that the people and the authorities so rarely listen. 
It's difficult work being a prophet. It goes unheeded the overwhelming majority of the time. It's daunting, but it's necessary. And when a prophet is listened to, things can indeed change. When the Holy Spirit is listened to, things can change. That's why a term like prophetic fire is so appropriate. Fires change things just like prophecy does. And that's why prophecy is also so uncomfortable, so unwelcome. Often, prophecy comes from those that are not in power. Authority often tries to snuff out the fires of prophecy because it demands change, which the powerful do not want. It often requires a loss of power or diminishing of power, a diminishing of wealth for themselves. Now, our Old Testament reading that you heard Angie read read from the book of Numbers serves as a reminder. Do not stop the work of prophecy. Do not deter that good work, even if it's being done by those whom you see as unfit. What is prophecy? It's speaking the truth. Most often speaking the truth to those in power. Sometimes those with the least power and the least training and the least eloquence have the most powerful message for those in authority. Do not silence them. They are speaking a truth too uncomfortable for those in comfort to deliver. Their words are like fire, and the fire of the Holy Spirit is both powerful and mysterious. So heed the words of Moses when the people run to him and say, these guys are prophesying. Be like Moses and say, don't stop them, don't silence them, do not quench the Spirit. The prophecies of fire, the fire of prophecy, uh, this prophetic fire is needed in our lives. It's needed in our communities. And fire, Holy Spirit, fire only works with air. Fire needs oxygen. When I think of the work of the Holy Spirit as fire in our midst, especially as prophetic fire in our midst, I think about how when fire operates, it has to have that oxygen. When the acolytes come up at the end of the service and they change the flame into smoke, they don't do it by pinching it or necessarily even blowing it out. They do it by suffocating it. They put the bell over there and the fire has no more oxygen and then it goes out. Humans need oxygen just like fire does. Much of the turmoil we see on the news right now and even in past years and other instances, were sparked by the inability to breathe. And a little while later in the service, you'll hear Angie pray the prayers of the people, the prayers of intercession. And I find it fitting that especially the second prayer of intercession today will reflect that prayer, that, that truth, that we receive the gift of life through our breath. Yet some cannot breathe through air pollution, through oppression, all sorts of factors. That prayer should remind us that some humans have difficulty breathing and that air can be a powerful force of nature, of life and of death, even of storms. Air works with fire to accomplish the flame. In our reading today that I just read you from Acts chapter 2 about Pentecost, the Spirit arrives not just as the flame, but also as a rushing wind, fire, and wind working together, bringing God's presence to all the people around the world. Now that presence of God, the Holy Spirit, exhibited in fire and in wind, that eventually brings peace. Jesus brings peace. The Holy Spirit brings peace. But for peace to be present... And for peace to be sustained, for peace to stay with us, there must be equity and justice for all. We cannot have peace when injustice and inequity are prevalent, when they deny some of us the ability to simply live and breathe. Do not cry for peace in the absence of justice. It's impossible. There can be no peace when there is injustice. Until justice has been rendered, you cannot cry for peace. But when justice is given to all of us, 
when equity has flowed throughout our communities, then, and only then, can peace come about, can a sense of shalom come into our communities. And when that happens, you won't have to ask for peace. It'll naturally occur as a result. So we can have peace, the peace of Christ that we encourage each other to share in, the peace of the Holy Spirit, the comfort of the Holy Spirit's presence with us. Christ has come for that very purpose. Christ has come not only for peace, but so that we may have life, and life abundantly even. But it's not just for me individually, and it's not just for you. The abundant life that Christ brings cannot be yours if it's denied to others. To live the abundant life in Christ, we must work for holistic justice so that peace may abound. And the fire of the presence of the Holy Spirit and the fire of the gospel of Jesus Christ lives in us and in our communities. That is a goal worth working toward. That is what we pray for. That is what we hope for. That is the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Normally at this point in the service, we would share the peace. We would say, the peace of the Lord be with you, and you would always say, and also with you, and then we would share peace with each other. And of course, we haven't been able to do that for some time, but I'd like to say a word about that before um, we engage in that activity in our own homes, in our own places, wherever we're watching this worship service. Um, <clears throat> it's meant to be a time of reconciliation and the creation of peace between those who may have had differences. There cannot be peace, as I said in the sermon, without justice. And that's true not just in the larger context, when people say no justice, no peace, but also it's true in each of our own lives. That sense of shalom, peace, is not created simply by mindlessly repeating, peace be with you, 
to a bunch of people that are around you. It's created through intentionally reconciling with those who, with whom we've wounded or by addressing issues where we feel wounded and would like acknowledgement from those who have wounded us. So instead of doing this normal, the peace of the Lord be with you today, uh, right up front, I'd like you to pause the video here in a moment and take uh, just a few seconds or however long it takes to think about unresolved conflict in your life. Where might you have wounded someone? Where might there need to be acknowledgement that you have been wounded by someone else, whether that's intentionally or unintentionally? Where might you like to receive justice from wounds that, that might have festered within for a long time and been buried in unacknowledgement? These things need to be addressed, and they cannot be addressed until we take the time to identify them, acknowledge them to ourselves, mention them to those with whom we would like to reconcile. So pause the video here in a moment and take all the time you need, however long it takes, to consider your wounds and the wounds you've caused. Make a list if you need to, if there's a, a lot of things. And then make a plan to take action toward reconciliation. And once you've done that, then you can restart the video. And peace of the Lord be with you. Uplifted by the promise of healing and resurrection, we join the people of God in all times and places in praying for the church, the world, and all who are in need. We call on your spirit of unity, giving thanks for our different vocations. Activate and utilize the diverse gifts present in your church that they reveal your love for all. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We call on your spirit of life, present in air, wind, humidity, storms, and oxygen in our atmosphere, breathing energy into all things. Heal with your breath the whole creation, especially those who struggle to breathe due to air pollution. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We call on your spirit of righteousness. Wherever we are, a people divided, Unite us. Wherever we are prideful, humble us. Give each one of us a heart for justice and empathy. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We call on your spirit of healing. Bless nurses, doctors, midwives, chaplains, counselors, and hospice workers as they care for those in need. We pray for all who long for comfort especially Dale, Jane, Linda, and Mary. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We call on your spirit of friendship. As Elizabeth welcomed Mary into her home, give us a spirit of welcome to those whom we meet in this congregation and outside its doors. Surprise us daily with unexpected grace that we rejoice in every blessing you send. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We call on your spirit of hope. As you have led your saints in all times and places, stir in us the desire to follow their example, leading us from death to new life in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. With bold confidence in your love, almighty God, we pray, place all for whom we pray into your eternal care through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Our Father, Father in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be your, your name. name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come, come, your will, will be done, done on earth as in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us today our daily bread. bread. Forgive, Forgive us our sins, sins as we forgive, forgive those who sin against us. us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May the one who brought forth Jesus from the dead raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. 
Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. just as he said. Go in peace, share the good news. Alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia. Alleluia.